Hello everyone and welcome back to Feed the Beast, Minecraft, Cryptocraft, you know the title so you know what we're doing today. Right now I'm just going through my daily routines. I'm going to need to grab myself some bronze, some sticks, we're going to make a grafter because what I've been working on lately and what I haven't showed you is that I'm working on both tree and bree beating at once and the trick is that's exactly how it's done. Uh, the fact that the bees fly around and pollinate the trees is actually kind of like a byproduct to my normal bee uh, experimentation. Well, I, I say experimentation, but really, I kind of understand what I need to do from single quest. You mix the cons and the cultivates together to get the... Oh, there we go! This is exactly what I wanted. A special pink tree. Uh, I only have one of them so far, and it's there on the ground. I don't know why it's not growing right now. Because it should grow into a very small cherry tree. And I'm pretty sure that these cherry trees, you can only get them through breeding. Similar to this lime tree that I've got going on here. Anyway, let's actually have a look at the bees that I've got going on right now. I've got an industrious queen that is making me pollen and stringy combs. I've got some diligence and unweary bees that I've got mixed up together. And somewhere along the line, I might have the off chance of producing some Imperial Queens for Royal Jelly and Pollen at the same time, pretty much. I think if you mix them together, you just keep making hybrids. I'm not entirely sure, but I've noticed in practice that if bees are kept in captivity and just bred together for, like, ever, what ends up happening is there is actually a point where you stop getting princesses from them. So I guess technically that means there is a limit. Not a particularly big one, but a possible one. Now this hill cherry sapling is something we need to know. So what we end up doing is we squeeze the honey in our squeezer. We put some liquiducts under the floors to put the honey into this analyzer. I did kind of borrow this technique from Knight, but uh, I gotta say, it's working out pretty well. Uh, I've created some silver limes and apple oaks and i don't know larch trees that can make apples apparently unless they make them already in which case somehow i'm making it so my larch trees don't make apples which of course isn't very useful but this cherry tree hill cherry sapling height smaller fruit cherry i've never gotten cherries before so i really want to grow some cherry trees i don't know if the fact that it's called a hill sapling means it needs to be higher up but I'm guessing because it's a small tree you only need one kind of sapling now I don't actually know like the range of bees like if this tree grows here is it is it still close enough to this apiary or do I need to get another one I'm not sure and the deal with the leaves is that eventually, as your bees move about, you'll notice some leaves take on a different color than the other ones, and that means that they are ripe for harvesting with this grafter, which, until it gets to the last use, is pretty much guaranteed to give you new sapling. There we go. See? Apple oak. See, it's unique. We don't know what it is. Now, unfortunately, right now, based on my trees, they aren't all that special. But if I can get these hill cherries to grow... What I could end up doing is having every single tree of mine produce either apples or cherries. Now, I don't know what a cherry is, like, but it's obviously a rare food if only cherry trees can produce them until you breed them together. So that makes it pretty worthwhile to me. Why? <laughs> Just because it's rare. I want to have it. So what is going on in the rest of my base? Well, let's have a brief look into the mechanics uh, but this lever right here basically c controls, well, not these lasers, but, uh, yeah, four electrical engines going pretty much non-stop just to make sure that my EU power is converted into MJs. And I've got a buffer here, which can produce power for when the engines are off. Eh, see, it's got both the input and the output, so power just cycles into this redstone energy conduit all the time. And whenever I need it for something, like for example, I've got some combs to centrifuge, I, I basically don't need the steam engines anymore. So that's good. That's a nice little shortcut that I don't need to worry about. What's on the agenda? What do I need to do right now? Well, besides playing around with bees and getting interesting trees, why is that? Well, because I want to turn the outside of my house 
into a vague park kind of idea. And what kind of a park? An amusement park. That's right, everybody. Uh, I played around with the clay sculpting a bit. You make a clay sculpture with a ball of clay and a wooden plank underneath. And then you make the sculpting tool, and then basically you add a bucket of water, and then you add a bunch more clay, and you can rotate it and move it around, and I've got kind of a snake thing. But I don't, I don't really know what to do with it past that. I mean, it's an interesting looking little garden sculpture, but I don't know if there's more I can do with it just yet. It's a little weird, I'll be honest, a little weird. Anyway, ever since I made this information booth out of microblocks to contain this one librarian villager, I decided we're building a roller coaster. So right now, let's actually have a look at what this thing does. I've got wooden tracks, which don't boost it much, booster tracks, which boost it a lot, elevator tracks, which actually give it a lot more speed, and that's it right now. As for the roller coaster, I... I just want a fun roller coaster, come on! And then that opens up so many more possibilities. I can breed cherry trees, I can basically turn the outside of my house into Roller Coaster Tycoon, okay? I don't know what other, um... What other devices or carnival games I might be able to build, but I really like that kind of a direction. You know, my character skin, you know, without my armor, look at me. Okay, I am Fwip, the Minecraft Jester. It's about time I had my own theme park. That would be epic. And especially fun is the fact that this isn't single quest, right? This is not single player. Everything I build here, other people can actually have fun with. And by other people, of course, I mean Knight and Hannibal and whoever else gets invited. But uh, for that purpose, I actually want to have a cool theme park outside my house. It's going to take a while, and I definitely need to experiment with some rails the different ones, uh, specifically maybe the launcher track. That would be nice. Some death-defying leaps. Something to do with frame motors, maybe. Although I hear that those take a long time to actually load up. But regardless, that's a bit of my long-term plan for now. Bees, trees, and coasters. And maybe some fairway games. And, you know, all the different kinds of trees to make this place actually look like it's right out of Roller Coaster Tycoon. That would be kind of fun and awesome. And I'm kind of down for that. Unfortunately, uh, I built this thing all out of glass to protect my uh, golems. And they died anyway. I think my uh, I think my tallow golem must have offed himself in the cauldron. I can't believe that. That's awful. But basically, what I've noticed is my dangerous flux node actually creates fire bats. Originally, I thought they came through the nether portal, so that's why I closed that off over here. But no, no, fire bats are apparently also spawned from dangerous levels of flux, which is what I have. And, uh, what's the deal with fire bats? They kill everything. So, my wood golem, my straw golem, my iron golem that could attack the bat back, I found that guy gone and a giant fire in his wake. Okay, it burned down a lot of the grass. That's why there's no grass here. And no golems, so I'm really sad about that. Ah, <sighs> Thomecraft without golems? It's just not that much fun, so I need to think of some way to get my golems... ...not dead. But I certainly have too many potatoes right now, so I don't need to worry about that right now. Let's build an MFSU, first of all. Because I just... Let's actually just do some regular stuff today. I figure that's not a bad idea. Everything else that I've done in my base, honestly, has been a lot off-screen, because I already know how it's done. I'm sure you already know how it's done. And if you don't know how it's done, I would suggest build a centrifuge, centrifuge up 64 redstone. That will give you some silicon cells, which you can make the silicon plates. And then, basically, I converted regular solar panels into the advanced ones pretty much immediately. Okay, so we're going to make four energy crystals, first of all. Why? Because that's what the MFSU takes. In fact, the MFSU takes an MFE as its uh, ingredient. Funny enough. I don't know if you find that funny. I think it is. It's like, it's like every upper tier one actually still requires you to build the lower tier ones, too, so it feels like a large waste of resources. But it's not. It's important. Just... So much of a hassle. It makes me not want to build the industrial grinder because I have to build a second industrial electrolyzer and that alone took ages to make. Maybe not ages, but a lot of time. 
and I don't like wasting my time in this game. And the fact that there's an industrial grinder in the common factory is, is fine. I mean, when do you really need the industrial grinder? Sheldonite? I haven't gotten any Sheldonite. I haven't even tried floating in the end ever since Hannibal died by his jetpack running out of power. I've been really cautious about wanting to head out there. AKA, I don't want to head out there. <laughs> okay. So that's fine, let's just take care of this. The next thing I need is an advanced machine block, if I'm not very much mistaken. And the advanced machine block only takes a couple advanced alloy and some carbon plates. So yeah, you're probably thinking, Fwip, why on earth do you have all these machines? Well, to be honest, I like to be independent, okay? I like to be able to say, here's my base. It is basically almost one of everything that's already in the common factory. But the point is, I don't have to be in the common factory to uh, do my regular business. It's not so much that I have my own fact I'm out of cable. Wait a minute, I've got rubber. Oh my goodness, copper cables. Never underestimate the necessity of them. They're in almost all the basic parts. That's why I highly recommend, like me, you build yourself a uh, electric tree tap, and you'll never need to worry about that, ever. All right, making some copper cables. Nice, simple stuff. Trust me on this. If you've ever played Feed the Beast, this is the basics. This is the basics. I'm sure everybody already understands this. Oh, and to everybody who's using Thomecraft without industrial craft, rubber. Rubber is great for those two aspects. Seriously, you'll regret it. Golems, being able to make a golem animation core without any flux, that's pretty awesome. Okay. So, we just need an advanced circuit, if I'm not wrong. I reserve the right to be wrong, but I don't think that's the case right now. There we go. MFE, and the advanced machine block, and wait, what's the other parts? Let's hit the U key. And give it a second to load. Why do I want an MFSU? There's nothing that would actually take that much power. Well, basically, I think the charging station from Greg Tech is a massive waste of time. I need three Lapatron crystals, which can take sapphires. I can do that. I can do that easily. Electron tubes also are a great shortcut for things. I'm serious. Just uh, make a whole bunch of them at once. I made a stack of 64, and you can use them in place of regular circuits. It'll save you all that rubber that I just needed to make earlier. So I need six of them. As I was saying, the charging station in uh, from Greg Tech seems like a waste of time. Like, I don't even have a mining laser. All I have is the advanced diamond drill and an advanced chainsaw. Why do I need the chainsaw? It too hits zombies and skeletons, okay? That's pretty cool. I like that ability. Also, it, it does nice things to wood. But really, it's like a free sword. It's, it's really a free sword. Okay. There we are. All the crystals we need. But basically, I don't want to keep chucking things into my MFE. Why don't I just use one MFSU to charge everything? Because the charging station seems like such a waste of time. It takes iridium. Man, iridium? I don't even know what I need it for, but I know it's expensive. There we go, an MFSU. Now let's go hook this up somewhere into my power grid. Somewhere, just so it exists. Because I have a lot of extra energy. A ton. I have... Eight advanced solar panels on the roof with nothing to do. You know, I've got two MFEs here just to double the 128 so the blast furnace is efficient. Okay, let's think about this for a moment. Where is my power cable going right now? Because I'm never going to really need the output of this sucker. Uh, let's see here. Right here, there's my, uh, th that's my power. That's my power line. Why don't we attach it? Well, I could move it later very easily with the wrench. But just in case I don't want to do that later, let's make it easy on myself. I want it facing here, I think. Right here is where it should be. I could put it in the wall, or I could put it there. Yeah, okay. I don't want it to conflict with anything. It would look really good. Yeah, let's just put it here. That looks fine, right? You might be astounded to know, everybody, 
that before playing this server specifically, I never used microblocks. And if you've seen everything that I've built so far, man, do I like micro. Look at that thing charge up. That's beautiful. Okay. Let's top up the diamond drill. There we go. Let's top. Nope. Chainsaw's good. All right. That's wonderful. Ugh, everything is just working so well in this base. Oh, I know what I need to do. Let's just carefully grab all this mulch that I've got. Where did I get mulch from? A moistener. Do you need mulch? If you need mulch, build a moistener and just tell it to do something like make you mycelium or make you mossy cobble. It'll get rid of all that extra wheat from your farm. It doesn't take that long to work, and it doesn't need power. That's the cool thing. The moistener doesn't take power. It just needs a constant stream of water to work. So that's wonderful, right? We'll hook all this stuff in here. Kaboom! Well, it doesn't explode, but it does make moss cobble, which I could use. I mean, the real point is it makes mulch. Why do I want mulch? I'll show you right now. I need a tree farm. Oh, do I need a tree farm? And I don't know how the multi the multi block farms work yet. I really should figure that out. But until I do, I've got a ton of extra dirt. We're gonna use this carpenter. I need one more block for that to to work though. And the one more block I need is one more last redstone energy conduit. Now I am perhaps a little bit short cutting. I try not to do that, but to be honest. Here on the CryptoCraft server, they got really far ahead before I joined. Okay, they have literally so much uh, copper and electrum they don't know what to do with. There we go. That will power that up. So we tell it, very simply, I want to make some, uh, some of this mulch. Now, I believe as long as it can't actually generate mulch, it won't pull more power out of my system than it needs. But I, I don't even need to worry about that. This 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 thing is at max capacity. There's there's no reason to worry about power. What do I need the hummus for? We're gonna build a simple tree farm somewhere. How would that be? Let's actually figure that out. How do I build a tree farm? Well, at some point I'm gonna need a logger to cut down the trees for me. And that of course will cost Ooh, three of the diamantine tubes and a basic circuit board. The basic circuit board is easily done. Very easily done. That's fine. And some sort of farm. So I'm guessing the arboratum. Is that how you pronounce that? Arboreum? Arboretum. Apatum. Whatever. Golden electron tubes. Okay, I got those already. So I'm going to want some basic circuit boards. I'm going to want some of those other things. So why don't I take care of that? And I will meet you back here extremely shortly. Trust me, the thermionic fabricator is not very much fun to watch work. But when you know how it works, it works good. <laughs> and we're back. We've got the logger. We've got the arboretum. Uh, oh. Oh, I forgot to make some chests. Okay, one moment. I will build... How many chests do we need? I don't know. I don't actually know. Probably eight chests? No, less than eight chests. Okay, let's just make these into planks, and we'll call that enough to add to this. To make, like, in four chests, I believe? Maybe. Alright, so we've got all the components we need. Now, I've given a lot of thought into where to actually place my tree farm. Why did I need to worry about that? Well, because I already said I want to make a massive amusement pa park in front of my house. And uh, if you've noticed from the map, I live on the edge of an island. If I go far out into the ocean, I end up in a place known as the dead zone. There is a massive glitch way out there. It's like a marsh biome meets the ocean, and it is choppy, and it will crash the server if I go there. It is maybe 700 blocks in this direction. Yeah, so we can't do that. So I've decided the shortest area to build it, because the Arboretum, of course, creates a lot of land, destroys a lot of things when it's built. I could put it over here. That would be a good area. But to 
bring out my redstone conduit all the way over there would take a lot of resources. I think it might simply be easier to go for the short distance and just put it right here, maybe even on the water. Something like that. It might look bad at first, but I'll make it work. I'll like build the island up around it. I think this should be okay. If I just bring this up over here, and then maybe down a few. Or wait. Yeah, I need to dig a little bit more. Okay, one moment. Uh, Omni Wrench is a great tool for removing these. There we go. How many more of these do I have? Uh, eight, nine. I'm gonna want to make it go upwards too, aren't I? Still going under the ground would be a lot. I did it again. It's a bit hard to figure out where the placement of these belongs. Okay, first of all, we'll put we'll just put this one down here. And then, now I'm stuck in the ground. Lovely. This is not what I expected. <laughs> These should be easier to be placed and walk around. I mean, look, what, what's their hitbox here? There we go. Seven. Okay, that should... Seven, seven, seven. So... Cut out like this. I should have enough space. Alright. I'm gonna need more dirt later on to build up this island, but I'm okay with that for now. For now, we'll just fill this in. Okay. Grand. So. Bring out the line like this, underneath. Okay. And then, uh, up one for the logger, and one on the side for the arboretum. Now, what is the range of the arboretum? Uh, is that gonna cut into itself, is my big issue here. Because it does cut a lot of land up when you use it at first to build stuff there's really no way to test how much damage this is going to do ahead of time so let's just put down the arboretum I'm really worried this isn't enough place uh... it's gonna go there Okay, if it doesn't work, I'll put it to you like this. When the Arboretum destroys blocks to place blocks, those blocks are still found on the ground. So worst case scenario is it destroys the redstone conductive current, and I can just replace it again. Okay, so I'm going to need some saplings and some hummus to get us started off. That's great. Carpenter has been working on that for a while. Thank you very much, Mr. Carpenter. I will grab four stacks of it. Redstone thing is set to output 5 MJs per tick. Perfect. That'll be enough to run both the Carpenter until it fills up and the Arboretum to full capacity. Alright, so as I fill this thing up, it should begin. And there's a sand slot, but that is sand that it creates naturally as trees happen. So... It's not telling me anything right now. Hmm. Maybe the power's not here yet. Okay. There's a small glitch with the redstone conductive current. I'm going to explain it right now in the simplest way that I can. When chunks are unloaded, the game forgets about the, the energy data stored in the cables. And each of those conductive cables... You know, the ones with the redstone in it. I'm probably calling them the wrong thing. Anyway, each of them stores a bunch of energy in them too. So to make energy go to the other, it obviously has to fill up each cable first. So that's why initially energy takes a while to travel. Now, if the chunk unloads, it forgets about that. So I'm going to need to up the chunkage on my base just a little bit. That should be good. I hope that doesn't change things. Just in case. Just to make sure that the arboretum can function fine. And for the sake of argument, let's up this to 10 MJs per tick. It doesn't need that much, I don't think. And I think it only tends to pull out what it needs. Just like the electrical engines can be hooked up to an MFSU. They just won't work. Okay. This is the Arboretum. How do I know when it works? It's, it's, it's getting power, right? 
Oh, wait. Whoops. Wrong button. Okay. Because if I do like this, that would be if the Arboretum created power, it would be outputting. But it's not. It's inputting. I want it to be blue. It's got hummus. It's got saplings. It's not giving me any other information. Why isn't it working? Does it need a redstone signal? It doesn't say it does. These these forestry farms, they're a little bit unintuitive, maybe? Now, I did hear somewhere that these basic farms might actually not work. You know what might have happened? Maybe it started to work, and it cut into the ground, and it broke the cable, and then that obviously shut off the power instantly. That's possibly exactly what happened. All right, in that case, if that's what's going to happen, I need to change this outside a little bit. That's actually really funny. Exactly what I anticipated happening has actually exactly happened. Um, so that's why the Arboretum isn't working. It's dead. It killed itself. <laughs> it's, it's like it had a failsafe that made it fail. Okay, so the next step then is do I actually have other conductive cables in storage. I didn't make that many. Again, I don't like cheaty-ish things. Okay, no I don't. So I'm gonna have to make this cable last a long time. Okay, maybe I just need to pull the cable down first, and then it will stop cutting itself. <laughs> That's not healthy. That's not healthy in cables, and it's not healthy in people. So chop, chop, chop. This should work. Okay. We'll just make it go down like this first. Now, oh, there it goes. It's starting to shred the ground considerably. So, how much ground shredding is it going to do? That much I'm not sure of. Is this enough space between where my house is and where the... Ba oh, yeah, apparently it is. Okay. Yep, yep. It doesn't... It doesn't... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't wait around, does it? Places all the hummus, cuts up all the ground. All these trees should grow exactly fine. They should grow perfectly right here next to my house. Now, I think... I'm not entirely certain of this, but I think it'll be okay. Like, I don't think there's a very big possibility that these trees are, in fact, too close to my house and therefore will not grow ever. Oh, I seem to have cut into my house line. And by house line, I mean my underground lab. I don't want to cut into my underground lab, and this actually has to be this high because, yeah, I kind of screwed up a little bit with the design. It should be okay as long as there's, like, one patch of land here. Now, this should be okay. If I cut this up, where am I? Am I, am I okay still? Looks like I am. I can't place anything there, though, so this corner block needs to exist. And then the light shines through there, so I'd rather have this here. Okay, so we're just going to clear this all out just in case, and this is where that is. Okay, that's okay. Hey, the trees are starting to grow. They're not too close to the house. Perfect. Okay. So, what is next? Well, first of all, I have this massive ring around the entire house that I don't need to care about. And as for the Arboretum, I think it's still going to drain power, unfortunately, even though it's done. Which is a slight problem, but uh, that that's okay. It did what I wanted it to do. I've got a tree farm. I didn't have a tree farm before, now I do. Now, I don't think there's a way to speed up the tree growing process, but I know that, you know, because my base is now chunk-loaded perfectly, I don't need to worry about it. I can just go off, do other things, the trees will grow on their own, and I can use my redstone energy conduit to tell it to just stop giving power. Simple. It is using up a lot of hummus, but that's okay. There's no other use for hummus in the game, I don't think. Alright, so I got my four chests and the logger. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the logger right there. So this will chop, chop, chop everything perfectly. I'm going to put the chests like this, I believe, so that, well, what happens now? The logger's going to cut things and put it into this chest here. 
No, this is a terrible setup, actually. One minute. No, this, this is not right. I don't want everything to go everywhere. Now, the best solution is the simplest one. Chest there for the logger. Chest there for the arboretum. And now it will put stuff in the same chest, and I've got two extra chests for no reason. That's okay. I'd rather have too many chests than no wood, because having a shortage of wood is what made me build this arboretum in the first place. Perfect. Okay. What's next, then? Well, we'll fix the design. We'll build up this uh, this dirt area perfectly. That, that, that will be good. I don't like having weird floating islands over the Pacific Ocean of death, because, as I said before, you go out in a boat, you'll crash the surfer in my land. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very dangerous place I've chosen to build my place. And actually, that basically means I control the seven seas. Because uh, nobody, nobody can, can outswim me. If they go past my house, they die. In fact, everyone dies. So that's not going to happen. Simply by virtue of where I am, I am protected from naval assaults. I think. Anyway. Logger. Arboretum. It's gonna work. Let's make sure this is lit up enough. I don't want any more zombies spawning in close to my house. Even though they can't break down the... the <gasps> The cherry sapling grew. Oh, that is weird. It's... Oh my. Redwood and purple leaves. That's a new one. Do I still have my grafter on me? Okay, good. Well, this is very, very unique. Did the other one grow yet? No, it did not. That took a long time. But that's okay. Alright, so the bees... The bees should continue to pollinate. And maybe... Maybe I'll get lucky. And I'll get every single tree I have to produce cherries. That would be amazing. That would be great. What does this stuff look like when you use it as, uh, as, as planks? It's very interesting looking, isn't it? Cherry wood turns into... Oh, orangish. Okay, I'll put you back. Er, wait a minute, that's wrong. <laughs> I, I think I need a shift, maybe. Shift click? No, that's not right. Maybe I just need to be lower. That would make sense, too. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Okay, this is wonderful. The small cherry tree. Oh, it's really pretty. I like this. I could do, I could totally see myself doing a roller coaster tycoon type, uh, type amusement park. With sp oh, it grew, too! Yes, yes, great. Okay, I will get back to you later on whether the bee pollination thing becomes a success because that's a good plan what could i do with cherries i don't know maybe i could have a bobbing for cherries exhibit in a haunted house hey wait a minute there's an idea a very very strange haunted house with lots of moving platforms and scary ghosts that could be difficult to make but i like that idea haunted house exhibit could be a lot of fun something definitely i could use the frame motors for because i've been looking for a purpose for those for some time now. Alright, I think I'm rambling a little bit. Anyway guys, this has been how to set up a very basic tree farm. And how you can use bees and trees to maybe customize some trees. And some of my future plans. If you have any suggestions, leave me a note in the comments. I appreciate all your support and interest. Be sure to check out the other people on the CryptoCraft server too, because they're cool. Oh, man. And as for my secret plans that I plan to use, I hope it won't take too long, but I do need to get a portal gun for that. Some of you may have an idea what I want to have in store. But hey, with an amusement park in the works, too, I'm going to be busy for a while. So, see you all next time, and thanks for watching.